How important is physics at high school? You work at university in yeah. a physics department. Isn't it your job to teach the physicists? Shouldn't the schools just be handling reading, writing and arithmetic? No, the schools need to broaden, and they do. And uh, we, uh, we do, in do, do indeed take students to do physics, and we teach them, and we educate them hopefully up to a very high standard so that when they go off they can become physicists, they are physicists. But we do have a basic level that we expect the students to have achieved and we rely on the schools to reach that level because there's a kind of a it's somewhat of an inertia in the system perhaps that uh, we uh, take the students on with a given expectation and we start teaching the students from that expected value and uh, the, the, the the difficult thing and the, the thing that we always have to try and balance is are the students up at that level, are they past that level, are we under underachieving in the sense of challenging them or are we pushing them too much too early and that's where the difficulty I think initially lies in getting that balance so that we can then move forward but we definitely rely on the schools to teach them and, and they do, they do a good job. So everything's rosy and dandy then, you're happy with the job the schools are getting? I enjoy teaching the undergraduates here and, and uh, but there are indeed issues, I think, and it's, a, it's, a, it's not just one issue for the schools and an, another issue for the universities. We have, to, we have to overlap. We just have to. We have to. There's no point the school sending students to us and, and us just assuming they know way more than they know. Similarly, there's no, no point us underachieving uh, in, in the sense of how we push them. We have to make sure that, that uh, we understand where the students are, are entering the university and, and carry on. And I suppose the only issues for me are, are they're mainly on the mathematics side. It's not so much on the physics. When I go out to, to talk to students and, and, and to schools, and, um, I've, I'm very impressed with the, the, the breadth of physics that they're doing. For example, they do quantum theory now. They do particle physics. They do cosmology. Oh, I never did that. We, we were, it was a much smaller syllabus I think when I was at the school which was in the late 70s um, so it's quite a long time ago um, but the downside could be that because they they try to cover such a breadth of areas now they have still only got two years in which to do it for their A levels then they're struggling to cover things in the kind to the kind of depth that we're expecting them to be covered and I think somewhere therein lies some issue that we have to at the, at the university, we have to uh, accept that now and, and so that when the students are coming in we have to be prepared to, to make up that, that gap because they, they're covering more material I think but they're covering it not, not necessarily in the depth that we would have assumed and it's particularly the case I think in maths and remember maths is the, build, is, is the language of physics you know you cannot you can read popular books on physics and on cosmology in particular, which doesn't have much maths, but if you then want to actually get into the heart of the subject, you really have to know the maths. And um, having had a daughter that's just done her A2s, so she's done the a AS and A2s and done maths and further maths, I, I feel I've got much more of a feel now for what the maths content is on a typical A level. Well, I'm talking about the, the, the package. <laughs> I, I don't think you can just talk about physics without talking about maths. maths is the language that physics is written in. And uh, you, physics is based about, it's, a, it's, an, it's an experimental subject, you do observations, but to try and understand those observations, you need equations to explain what you're, what you're doing and to explain the results. So you need to do mathematics. And at high school, mathematics um, is taught um, uh, in a, what's called A-level, um, this is what you require in order to get to university to do, to do maths and then do physics. Um, and A-levels begin when the students are around 16, 17, and they finish when they're 18 or 19 and they go on to university. And uh, so they do these two years usually of more detailed mathematics. And they, they can, it can be done as a, just a straight exam, straight A-level, one subject or you can add an extra bit on, right? And so you can do a second day level and that's called further mathematics. And what I've noticed from what my daughter did, she did the maths and the further maths, she did both, um, is that the further maths goes into a, quite a lot of detail on some really important physics-based material. Um, 
And the mathematics, whereas it touches on that material, it doesn't necessarily touch on it in enough depth. And I think in, therein lies the issue, that uh, when, when we say they're not prepared mathematically, what we're really saying is they haven't done the type of problems that we do in physics in the depth that we expect, so that they can do, do them for their exams, they, they front load them into the in their memory banks for their final year exams in, in May and June, but because it hasn't been ingrained in them, by the time October comes, it's gone again. And we, when they arrive and we start setting physics problems which have a strong mathematical content, we're assuming a certain level of knowledge that they don't, they've just forgotten or they've never done. Whereas in the further maths course, they actually do do more of this. They do, they do up to the maths and then they do more. And in fact, I was very impressed with some of the stuff that they do in the, at the further maths. And they do, in fact, start introducing the maths of quantum mechanics, uh, which I certainly never did. And they do complex numbers. I never did complex numbers. And they do sort of manipulating angles and doing integrations and differentiation of more complicated functions, which is really sets them up well to do physics. So I think those students, at least in the UK, that have managed to do maths and further maths are quite well prepared to start a physics degree. Those that have just done maths will have to do a bit of reading when they get here to, to catch up. So you don't have to have studied further mathematics to come and do no, physics at uni? No, you don't, but you have to be prepared once you get here to start reading the maths books to pick up quickly what you do. I, I had this, right? I went to university in 1979, I went down to London and I went to my first maths lesson and this funny letter I kept appearing and I thought it was a one, I thought it just couldn't, it was just had funny writing and then I saw this I squared and it was minus one and of course it's the introduction to imaginary numbers and I'd never come across and I had no idea and um, in fact I felt like quitting, I thought that guy, if this is lecture one, what chances have I got? But of course you you go and get a textbook you, and you start reading it and you, you go through it and, and, and that's part of university that self-education, you've just got to go and do it. And if you're prepared to do it, you'll be fine. So from what you've seen of what the high school physics people are mm. doing, though, you're quite happy with the, the modernness of it. It's not like they're yeah. stuck in Newton times no, and throwing I'm, snooker balls. I'm happy with the modern aspect. I, I think they are introduced to quite a few ideas. And um, that's how it should be, I think. They, they, it's, that's exciting. And, and I'm pleased that that's the case, yeah. You obviously, more and more as the years go by, I imagine, you're being exposed to more and more undergraduates who come here from other countries. Mm. How well prepared do they seem compared with British students, for example? We don't get as many as you might imagine, um, but those that do come, it depends which country they've, they've come from. I, the ones you, you've that occasionally come over from uh, Asian countries are, are really quite well prepared, um, as are the ones that come over, say, from Germany or... Um, uh, Sweden or you know the Nordic countries they're all well prepared and then you get a, you get a cross-section though you, you also get those that are coming across that aren't as well prepared but it's a small number so it's difficult to say anything in general about them there's just not enough of them. Is there anything you'd what would you change then if I made you education secretary for a year education mm. secretary Ed Copeland You're right what would be the first thing you said in the meeting when you sat down with all your or your chiefs, what would you say, come on, let's change this for the good of physics? Um, you might be a bit surprised, I'd say stop selling off the football pictures. <laughs> let's get some sport back in there, because I think <laughs> we need it. Um, and in terms of maths, I think my, I would concentrate in, so the areas that I know, I don't know about the English and the humanities, I don't know really how that's going. Um, in terms of the sciences, um, I think ge generally they're doing, a, they're doing a good job, but I, I would concentrate on the maths at learning a bit more in, in a bit more depth. I think they cover lots and lots of areas again in maths. I mean my daughter did an air, a part of maths called decision maths and I just could not, it seemed to be working out how to best work out flow charts and I couldn't get my head around what was the outcome of it and everyone I talked to was doing it couldn't work out why they were doing it and yet more basic maths which if they, if they could have just gone into, into a bit more detail would really set them up, not just for physics, but for maths itself and for engineering. There are lots of techniques that you need 
mathematical techniques that you need, whether you're doing engineering, building bridges, working out electronic systems, whether you're doing straight mathematics, whether you're doing physics, whether you're doing chemistry and rates of reaction, you need to know about differentiation and integration and calculus in general. And I think concentrate a bit on that. Get that ingrained in there so that those who want to do maths at university or maths related subjects are well prepared for it. Is there a danger though that you scare off potentially talented students? I mean I love coming here and talking about physics with you but when I look at what's written on that board behind you that scares the life out of me and if I knew I was going to have to talk about that I probably wouldn't come here at all. Is there a danger that you're going to scare away potentially excellent physicists of tomorrow by telling them the hard part too early? But it's, it's not, so yes, absolutely. So if you just went and said, now let's go and prove Fermat's last theorem, you know, in the A level and let's introduce you to all this weird and wonderful uh, maths that you need, yeah, absolutely. But I'm not saying that. What I'm, I'm saying, you just, they just need to go into a bit more depth in what they're already doing. I think that the, the, it's this issue of they learn something, but they don't learn it really. They learn it well enough to get through to the exam. You know, we're, we, we, we're totally driven by exams. And uh, it's one of the sad things for me that they've introduced an AS, it's a, an exam after the first year of your A levels. And that's a really critical exam for getting into universities now. We didn't have that. And for me, it just, we just enjoyed our first year. We just learnt. That's what we did. We just learnt to do maths. We learnt to do physics. And we enjoyed it. And we learnt things in depth. Now it seems to me that the students have to learn chapter one, two, three, four, five. We've got to learn lots of past papers. And, and so they learn the basics, but they don't go into the depth. And that's all I'm saying. I'm saying you've just got to go into a bit more depth. I'm not suggesting you need to really broaden the areas of mathematics. No, I don't think that. Let, let universities do that. Let them take, take in students and, and then carry on that education and, and expand what they, their knowledge base. But come in with a, that little deeper understanding of the maths and the physics that you're doing. Speaking of going into more depth, just mm. lastly, can you go into more depth about what areas of maths you're thinking they're not quite cracking well enough? So the kind of things that I find that, uh, so when we do tutorials, for example, it's a great system, tutorial system, so there'd be four or five students around the desk and, and we'll be going through some problems. And there'll be physics problems, so there'll be something, I don't know, may, maybe pressures of raindrops or, you know, some motion around a curve of an object going around a curve or, you know, some projectile going. And so there's one aspect, you need to get hold of the physics part of it, but it seems to me quite often the students get tripped up on the mathematics that you need to solve the, the, the projectile question, for example. And that seems that it's the kind of, the, in the first year, the kind of mathematics we're expecting they will have done at A level generally, certainly in the first term or so. But they've forgotten it. They've, they've forgotten the, the tricks that you need to do some of these problems, some of the mathematics. What tricks? Well, for example, there are things like, there's a thing called integration, okay, where you maybe, integration is basically if you have a curve, uh, what, um, then integration allows you to work out the area under that curve, or you could work out the volume that that curve would sort of encompass. And uh, sometimes that curve might have quite a complicated looking uh, function. And so when you try and integrate it, it's not easy to integrate. You, and, but by doing a trick, by changing the variables, then you can actually rewrite that function as a much simpler function and then you can integrate it and then you change the variable back and you get back to what you needed. And that trick of realizing here's a, here's a type of problem, what type of change of variable do I need is, will really help you. And, and students quite often just get stuck. They look at this integration and they think, ah, I can't do that integration, I don't know what to do. Whereas if they'd have learned at school, it's one of the things that I remember spending hours doing is lots and lots of examples of that kind of thing. Others involve angles where you might have a, com a formula which involves a number of sines and cosines and, you, and it looks a mess but actually there are some really nice angle formula which allows you to simplify it all down and have a nice simple expression and then you can carry on with the physics side of it again and that's the kind of thing I'm thinking of. I'll ask you one last thing just because mm. I think it'll be fun to ask. You obviously use mathematics 
almost every day and yeah. I'm quite, com- quite comfortable with that. Yeah. How did you find helping your daughter with her maths homework as she did advanced mathematics? Was I it loved easy it. for you? Uh, no. No, and that, uh, the maths, the, so if you remember I said there's the maths part and then the further maths part. And the, the maths part, yes, I could generally pick it up. Uh, and I knew it. And, I, I, and uh, the further maths, though, actually was quite challenging, um, especially towards the end where they were, when they were dealing with the complex numbers, these imaginary numbers. And then when they're doing, they were basically uh, dealing with matrices and finding eigenvalues and eigenvectors of matrices and, and then doing something called diagonalizing them. And, and that's quite complicated. And that's the, that's the bedrock of quantum mechanics. And I said to, I said to my daughter at one stage, I said, do you realize you're doing quantum mechanics here? This is, this is basic physics. And she says, I don't care. I don't care. I just want to be able to solve the equation. <laughs> and uh, that's the downside of doing exams, right? You are just desperate to solve this for the exam. You know, will this type of question come up in an exam? Whereas actually, there was some wonderful physics hanging in there. <laughs> Which uh, She's now doing economics, by the way. She did okay. <laughs>